Hello, I'm Robbie Ward. I'm the government and politics reporter for the Daily Journal. And I'm joined today with Sonny Noble. He's someone who has, uh, well, I mean, honestly, he's caused a lot of trouble for people with the North Lee County Water Association that the Daily Journal has written about extensively dating to 2011. And he has agreed to join me today for his first on-camera interview to discuss events that have unfolded in recent years that led to being fired from his job. And so, Sonny, I appreciate you being here today. Yes, sir. Good to be here. Well, so you start off at North Lee almost six years ago as a laborer, and then you moved up to crew leader and and so um tell tell me uh not everyone uh recalls what happened in september what what led up to september of 2011 that um that led to uh really significant things at north lee and and so tell us about that well i started in 2008 and i was unexperienced I had no knowledge of the water system so it was kind of a learning basis to me at the same time and as I got to know the job and things things of that it was pretty much I was spotting things that didn't seem right and then research a little bit and, and know that it was kind of out of our line of work and, and when you say things didn't seem right like what what, what do you mean well, we was a water department, rural water department, and we was working on sewer, but yet we wasn't we wasn't over sewer. We didn't have the materials, gloves, boots, you know, anything to, to actually work on sewer and, and be safe with it, you know, and that was kind of a big concern with me, uh, not being able to, to have my gloves and be sanitary with it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was things like that, and then we was also working on a couple of rental properties you know you obviously that's not in the line of work of a water department right so for a rural water association uh is there some rule against working on private property yes you're not supposed to work on anything past the meter you know we're only allowed to work up to the meter and the meter itself anything past that's the customer side it's against the law mm -hmm. for us to mess with it at all and so so you saw things that seemed kind of strange and 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 you uh you and other employees worked in in on sewage sewer systems even though north lee's just a water uh association and and then you 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 and others worked on private property and so kind of well, what kind of happened from there? Well, uh, after, you know, talking to a few customers and asking questions, you know, I was in touch with Emily Lacaze with the Daily Journal. Mm -hmm. uh, and I talked to her about it and, you know, she did a little bit of research herself on, you know, correct, making sure we was correct, you know, and then she printed the story in September of 2011 and then just kind of blew up from there. Well, and 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 from there it it led to an investigation of of water uh si water throughout the system not having proper uh tests and evaluations yes and and from what i understand you, you could tell even without uh well you, you heard from customers uh, about concerns about the the water what what are some things that you saw with customers well in in 2011 you know it was it was in the summertime not not long before everything started taking place we was called out me and another employee that worked there at the time was called out to a house on Auburn Road and the guy that come to the door was complaining about the chlorine and he actually already had blisters coming on his skin from from the shower and uh, sure enough, he brought me a glass of water and I smelled of it and it was so stout it would burn your nose. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, it, it was things of that nature going to the house that seeing that stuff like that, you know, you know it's not right, and then when you go back and report it, and nothing's done about it. You know. So, so you, you kind of. You know, you contacted Emily Lacoste at the Daily Journal, and sh and she reported on it. But before you contacted her, had you ever tried to mention those types of things to people at the Water Association? I had brought it up to you know the supervisor at the time, Dan Durham, and had had talked to him about you know they have too much chlorine in their water. Their water is brown, you know, but it was one of those things cut on a flush valve and let it run overnight, you know, nothing was ever done about anything. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, he would go back around if there's too much chlorine in the water, he would go back and turn it down, you know, but uh, regular checks was not in process at that time. Okay, so, and and so you, you talked to people, your, the supervisor, and, and not anything to your, really the of any satisfaction resulted from it, so you decide to contact the Daily Journal in 2011, and 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 the public learning about this led to the entire North Lee Water Association's board of directors resigning, and the the manager at the time, Dan Durham, he received a federal indictment and later a conviction of falsifying federal documents, the, the water reports. And I'm, I would think that with you being responsible for all this coming into light, did, did it, how, how was it to continue working at the Water Association? It was, it was stressful at times, you know, uh, especially they didn't leave right away. Mm -hmm. and. Dan, you know, he, he continued working. So, you know, you know your name is in the paper and you know it's obvious that you reported it. So, I mean, it was really stressful, you know, and you kind of walked on your tippy toes there for a while. Yeah, but, but you know, you, you said that Dan was there for a while and, you know, when, when I've talked to people out in, while writing stories recently, I've heard people say different things about you contacting the newspaper about things that you saw. Um, so did you have, um, I mean, did you have some uh, agenda? Did you have a, an ax to grind with Dan Durham? So, wh I mean, did, what was your motive for, for, for speaking out or going public? Well, my motive was, you know, like I said, seeing the people and the customers not satisfied with their water, some of them even in dangerous situations, nothing getting being done about it. And I was the main one having to go to these people's house and talk to them, you know, and I felt like it was all on me and I could not satisfy them and could not do anything. I had no say so. Uh, nothing was being done, so I felt like I needed to contact someone who could do something about it. But then again, you know, that was also a tricky situation at, at that because they had so many connections and so many friends, you know, with inside the health department and inside, you know, really anybody big around, you know. So I actually contacted a guy from uh, Jackson Health Department and talked to him. And he he come in after the Daily Journal, you know. Right. Uh, and And so... After all this came to light, the the board turned over completely, and 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 then in early 2012, a, a, a new manager came on board, Jim Banker, the current manager at North Lee, and and so so a little time had passed from all the real blow up from 2011, and. So, so did things with the new board members and the new uh, manager there, did things kind of uh, turn, turn into, turn the corner? Did, did the Water Association kind of uh, start doing the work that you thought it, maybe it should do? We made a lot of progress in the beginning. It was uh, a really 
eye opener, you know, to the to the people to see the difference in the, in the water and the difference in the crews out working. Mm-hmm. Uh, our staff, you know, improved, and you know, we we got a few more people on board, so we was able to do more things, and progress took a a step forward, you know, and it it was amazing. But then, you know, things kind of settled in, and it took a turn for a worse again. Well, well, and, and, and again, this is just really coming off of a, a water association that has just been just totally rocked by controversy and, 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 and just deep problems within the water system, people having blisters on their skin from the overchlorination of the water. So, so what happened that you started to think something was not what it should be? Um, what do you mean by that? Like, well, well, you said, um, you know, I asked if things with the Water Association and after the controversy in 2011, did so things kind of... with a new board? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, did you, well, did, did you ever start to see things that led you to question uh, w- whether things were right. Yeah, I started seeing a lot actually, you know, and uh, I noticed things like there was a policy put put in place where you had to have uh, three bids to do any outside contractor work. That that wasn't taking place. Um, actually, the general manager's family was doing a lot of our work without any any bids at all being put in. And then also I noticed that a plumber uh, was doing work on the customer side and receiving pay from North Fleet Water for, for doing so. So, you know, that was that was kind of what led into it. And then the more I looked, the more I realized. Well, well, well so you said in 2011 that part, part of the issues then involved employees working uh, on, on the property owner's side, and, and that that is not allowed. And so, you're saying that you saw um, since the new board and since Banker took over, Northley actually paid money to someone else to do this kind of work. Yeah, to a, to a uh, licensed plumber. You know, he he was working on the customer side, but he was being paid through Northley. And we was actually asked numerous times, me, myself, and the other outside employees out there, to work on the customer side, but we refused to. And and so so you noticed that, and I mean, was there anything else? Well, yeah, I mean, as far as the the financial mismanagement, we've touched base on. Yeah, yeah, uh, and and I've reported a lot about the financial things but but actually I I didn't have any idea of it and I don't think most people even members of the water association knew the the depth of the financial mismanagement uh, non-compliance with the federal rural development loan and even fourteen thousand dollars unaccounted for and all of this was documented in, in the Water Association's fiscal year 2013 loan. And, and, I, and I, I requested the loan or the, the audit from the Water Association and they told me it wasn't a public document, which it is a public document. And so you contacted me about this. Why did you contact me about this audit? I'd actually been to our general manager, Jim Banker, on at least three different occasions and was discussing with him things that I didn't see was right and things that was under his control, you know, that was obvious that was going on. And he refused to do anything about it. And it was pretty much a a laugh in the face, you know. And then again, you're stuck with, this is your boss, you know, what, what can you do? I mean, you can't you can't overrule your boss. I mean, you have to take another step and you have to go 
to to the public with it because this is a member owned association. Yeah, but um, you know one uh, big difference between 2011 and and recently is in 2011 people were getting blisters on their arms and and, and burning their nose from smelling the water, but I mean with with the financial stuff I mean. Um, did, why did you think that was so important? But I mean, no one has public health uh, issues with that. No, but it's it's a it's a member-owned association. So I mean, the members, it's nonprofit. The members are bill is actually paying for the water association to keep running on their day-to-day basis, and that's the customer's money that's being abused. You know, it's just disappearing unaccounted for no invoices no receipts you know and that's not right I mean I don't want my hard-earned money that I'm paying bills with being abused whenever I'm paying a bill that's a necessity to have well and and, and so you know th- there's uh, all, all this uh, controversial stuff from just a couple years back and now you know you're, you're kind of disclosing more information that the North Lee uh, Board of Directors has not authorized. I mean, ag- again, I mean, did you have an ax to grind with Jim Banker or some other, uh, a, a member of the board of North Lee? No, I mean, the only, only run-ins I would ever have with Jim Banker was whenever I would call him on something that I didn't, didn't see right, you know, I'd call him out on it. Or when he would come to me and he would ask me to work on a customer side or ask my guys to, you know, I would tell them, no, that's unacceptable. We've already been through this one time and we're not going to do it again. You know, that was really the only ax there was to grind on the situation. As far as a person, I mean, me and Jim, we talked on a regular basis. We talked a lot about a lot of personal stuff in our life and, you know, it was no, there was no grudges there as far as personal on my side. You know, um, in the beginning it was really great, and I didn't really feel like there was anything with Jim against me. But then as things come to come to light and he got settled in, you know, it was a felt like a vendetta against me and two other employees up there. So, so why? So it felt like that, and I'm. So why did it feel that way? And and and, and what did you think cost? that to happen I don't know what caused it but the reason why I felt that way was you know because I was threatened to be fired so many times you know for things such as working on the customer side if I said no it was I'm your boss you'll do what I say or you you can be you can go home you can be fired Mm -hmm. and then I would say well let's just take this to the board then you know I want to speak with Terry Anderson myself and the rest of the board well, no, 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 no. No one's going to get fired here. You know, we're not going to go that route. I shouldn't have said that, you know. So I actually heard from a board member itself that Jim had been to the board meetings two or three times, you know, wanting to fire me, but would never bring forth a reason. You know, when asked what's the reason to terminate Sonny, he would say, well, he's just trouble for North Lee. But he would never give a reason, a real reason. So... It would never, never actually anything happen with the board. Well, and, and and you said you kind of felt like there was a vendetta then, but kind of back to 2011, after all that kind of shook out. I mean, how? I mean, you you, you saved, um, I, I guess, uh, um, a lot of customers from having problems with their their water in terms of chemicals in there. Did. Did um, did you get a what what response did you get from the public? Did everybody you know uh, uh, um, do, do they thank you for this or I mean what, what? I had a you know customers you know um, I can still see customers today and a lot of the customers who have had problems for many years you know that's lived on the system all their life you know they they still thank me but then you also had negative feedback too and most of the negative feedback was friends of the board or friends of the so so what manager. so what kind of negative feedback did you get i was actually you know called on several occasions and and threatened you know uh, 
threatened to be whipped when I was seen out. Uh, I've been threatened to be killed, uh, things like that, you know, and another employee was as well, you know, so it was, wasn't so much of that, but I mean, it did take place. Mm. And, and so, well, so when you talked to me, when you first approached me in February of this year uh, about this audit, and also when you contacted Emily Lacaze at, here at the Daily Journal in 2011, I mean, did, did it ever occur to you that, I mean, th this is something that could lead to you getting fired? It definitely was something that occurred to me about that. I mean, I for sure thought in 2011 that I was going to lose my job, you know. That was an outcome that was already in my head that was a given to me. I was really shocked when it didn't happen. And this time, I mean, I pretty much, I, I knew it for sure this time. Yeah, and, and so the day that the Daily Journal published the story that I wrote based on the audit you provided, you were fired that morning. The morning it came out in the paper. Yeah. And, the and, first story. And so, I mean, do, do you mind sharing uh, wh what happened that morning when you went to work? I pulled up at work, you know, about five minutes, ten minutes till eight. I pulled up at work and I seen two board members getting out of their vehicle walking into the, the office, and which I had already read the article, you know, before I come to work. so. Uh, I knew it had, been, it had been published that day, and when I arrived, I went straight into my office, and I was drinking a cup of coffee and uh, talking to the guys as they were getting settled in to start the work day, and uh, I kind of knew, I knew what was going to happen. Uh, actually, Corbin, um, one of the past employees, was going in the office to do his, his regular uh, daily um, checklist in there. And I, I told them, you know, I said, I can bet you money that when you go in there, they're going to tell you to send me in there. And he goes, no, 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 that's not going to happen. Sure enough, when he come back out, he goes, well, you was right. They want to see you in there. And I went in there, and they called Rick in there at the same time to witness and, it. And who, who, when you said they, like, who, who, who wanted? Uh, it was Jim, Jim Banker, the general manager, and there was two board members present, Donnie Leslie and uh, Gordon Gibbons. And they was already sitting in there waiting. So when I come into the office, uh, he he was kind of you know smiling and was like, uh, "Come on in, shut the door behind you and everything." And then uh, he just come out and said, "He said your services are no longer needed at Northfleet Water, and uh, at this time you can go." And so, the, and, and of course, like everybody at this point knew the story had come out that day and so did I mean did they say you know we know that you're responsible for this story you're fired no it didn't go like that whenever he told me I was uh, no longer needed in Northfleet Water I said okay I said well what's the reason and he said you've missed 19 days since January of 2014 and I instantly looked at the other outside supervisor, uh, Rick, and I said, Rick, I said, uh, have I missed 19 days since January? And he said, not that I recall. He said, not at all. And uh, then Jim kind of sat back and he said, well, uh, you, uh, you've you missed days. You've come in late and left early 19 times. So, so, so did they have any type of documentation showing that? No, I, I never seen it with my own eyes, but he, I asked him, you know, what 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 caused this? You know, like how can you prove this? I want to see it, you know. And he was like, "Well, I have it all wrote down right here in my little notebook." And he had a little notepad there. Uh, I never seen it. He said it was wrote down in there. Though. And 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 I've seen the Water Association's policy manual, and and I, and I know the policy manual. It it does say that. While these are the policies, Mississippi's an at-will state where an employee can get uh, can lose his job for for almost any reason. Uh, and and but but have have they ever told you that, Sonny, you're 
you're missing too many days. You got to get your act together because it, it, it seems like um, firing somebody for uh, missing work is something that uh, a, a supervisor would have discussed with an employee a number of times previously. You would think it would have been discussed and you'd think it would have been documented also in my personnel file, but you know, it wasn't. The only thing that was discussed was at, at that time and still at the present time, I was uh, battling a custody battle with my youngest son and I was actually, and I had physical custody of my son at the time, seven nights a week, and then we're going to court and everything else. So there was a lot of work that I was having, having to do with with that case and then also I was in the in the middle of actually reporting all the stuff against the Daily Journal but you know there was times I had to go meet with my lawyer there was times that I would come in maybe three hours late but it would be approved and I'd actually work three hours later after five and uh, actually had another employee there that would verify it you know and I would put it on my work that you know I came in at 11 o'clock so I worked until 8 p.m. and would write down what I did that night so that it was understood you know that I wasn't just sitting there and, and so but but still uh, I mean 19 days is a is a lot I guess to to miss you know a whole day or even partial days did 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 you ever hear from anybody at the water association that uh, this is unacceptable no, the only thing I heard was Jim. Jim was talking about it. He said, "Look, I know you got a lot going on right now. One day, whenever uh, I was needing to do some work, but uh, I didn't want to leave work." He said, "Look, I know you have a lot going on right now, and I know that uh, when it comes to your family, you know your family should be first, and you take whatever time you needed. The only thing I ask for you is you to be here in the morning time." and for you to have these guys lined up. And if you're not here, then the day before, I want the guys lined out for the entire day. And as long as you keep them busy, then me and you are good. You don't have anything to worry about. But because your job at that time was outside maintenance supervisor? Yeah, I was, I was outside supervisor over all the maintenance and uh, upgrades and new installs. Uh, okay, and, and so, so, so what, so he had actually said it's okay for you to miss some of these uh, regular hours of work as long as you have it covered and, and still make up the time. He actually said that to me, but not only did he say that to me, one day when I was not present and I was at a lawyer's office, he actually said that in a meeting to all the guys that worked outside. I think there might have been one or two that was not present at that time. but. There was there's several witnesses to testify. He told them that me and Sonny's already talked about this, and as long as he keeps you guys busy, you know he's good to go. He's not going to be here a lot right now. And so, but but then in April of you know a few months ago, he told you that you'd missed 19 days, and so you you were fired for that. Uh, yeah. So so what did you think when you heard that after and you said that he had actually told you previously that you could you could um, work different hours as long as you had your responsibilities covered well I thought it was a load of crap because it was and I mean I, I first thing I said to him you know when he said this was you know I said on the days you told that I left early or you know I uh, come in late they was approved and most days that I came in late I was actually working for North Lee Water on the way to work because we would have calls early in the morning three four five o'clock in the morning you know and we would do that and I actually had crews meet me on the site a lot of times you know and I would go ahead and line them up with that on my way to work and come to work and then line the rest of the guys out so you know I told them I said you you gave me permission I said and then sometimes when I would try to be working late to make up my hours or something you would tell me you don't have to do that you're on salary and he said yeah I know I said that but that was it he wouldn't acknowledge anything else all right but but you know even if they did say that you were fired for missing too much work I mean just a few years earlier you'd called a newspaper about 
illegal activities happening at the Water Association. And then earlier this year, you provided an audit showing negative things, financial things, management things, broken laws, non-compliance with a federal loan. I mean, what, what, I mean, and, and you even said that you knew that you would probably get fired the first time and you knew you were going to get fired when you contacted me about this audit. What, what, so what is it that made you compelled to do this? Did you just want to get fired? <laughs> no, I don't think anybody just wants to get fired, you know, and especially whenever you love what you do, you know. North Louisiana to me was not a, a job, it was a career, you know. I've been there fixing to be six years and uh, I really liked what I do. You know, and I, I like the outside work. I like to communicate with different people every day. Oh, um, but what led that to me was just, you know, something that eats away on you from the inside, you know, that if you walk away from it, you know, you're going to regret it the rest of your life knowing that, you know, you had a chance to stand up for, for people and stand up for what was right. And you would want someone to do the same thing for you. You know, if you walk away, then you're walking away from all these people and you know it's it's they'll walk away from you when you're when you need someone's help you know it'll come back to you they'll, they'll walk away from you and and so you you were you know you it's been a a number of months since you've been fired and I've continued to write about issues that North Lee and I've heard from people who've contacted me related to North Lee and I've continued to write about issues but w one thing I learned about you I, I I learned that when you were seven years old you you had I guess one of the most traumatic expen experiences that could happened to somebody you, you were what seven years old and and, and your your mom well you, your mom and your two older siblings did I mean did from what I understand you you lived in your mom's car for a period of time we was homeless you know a, a few different times you know and uh, there's not a lot of it I remember, but I mean the the parts that I do do remember from being young was a struggle. You know, it was it was good times, but it was a struggle. And but but something even more so than I mean living in your mom's car. Um, in November of 1989, your your mom went to work and she. She drove, uh, she left work and she was taking some two people, blind people, to home. And, and there was a train at Crosstown. And, 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 and one of her, well, her uh, former boyfriend drove behind the car. And then at the, at the train, uh, at the tr with the train passing by, uh, he he shot your mother and the two people in the car point blank with a gun and murdered all three. I I, I know this is this has got to be something that is is hard to think about, but um, I mean, have you ever what what how has that uh, shaped you? Do you think that that's had something to do with you? speaking out uh, you know with this kind of stuff and with, with North Lee or has it has it how, how I mean there's no way that this could not shape you how is this yeah I, I definitely agree that it has I mean I think you know traumatic events such as living in a car or you know your mom being murdered when you're seven years old there's there's no way possible that it could not affect your life and, and I think that it would do either one or two things to you. It would either, you know, make you a better person or it would traumatize you. And I think that, you know, it did help mold me into the person I am today, you know, to want to 
to be more than that and to you know want to want to live life and and so um and so you know after you know you're 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 32 years old you you you've been fired from your job that you say you, you would have liked liked to have made a career of and 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 you filed a lawsuit against Northley for wrongful termination and do you do you think that uh, do you think that North Lee do you think North Lee created some type of um, did did North Lee, why why did you file a lawsuit the lawsuit just kind of came came in you know to play it wasn't it wasn't nothing that I had planned you know it was not you know anything that uh, I was even wanting to do in the beginning. Uh, I actually had people contact me, you know, uh, I had lawyers contacting me wanting to speak with me. And when I first went in, you know, it was more of a, what can we do about going after them and and making it right, you know, getting these people out of there. And uh, that just, it kind of came into play, you know, but it was not anything that was planned and it was wasn't even in my head, you know. And and so, you know, the lawsuit says that uh, you you want uh, compensation for lost wages and uh, and 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 the impact. But it beyond financial, is there what what do you hope comes out of this lawsuit? I hope that you know it. it it can make North Lee Water a, a better place, not only for the members of the association, but for the employees to have a better work environment and not have to come in and stress about being being terminated and losing a job and not being able to provide for their family. Um, I would have hoped from the first time that that's what would have happened, you know, and you can you can only hope and pray that that is what happens this time, but you know it's. It's, it wouldn't have been expected, and especially to happen this soon, uh, to happen again. So I hope that it becomes a better place, but only time will tell. You know, I, I want to see, I want to see these people punished for what they're doing to the association as a whole. And so you say that's an interesting word, punished. I mean, do you have anger or? bitterness to, no. to, for being fired you know it, it, it will make you slightly anger I mean it's it's more it's more emotions than angry though I mean it's it's more of a how, how can people get away with this and still be going on with this you know it's it's an in-depth thought you know and it's Slightly angry, you know, but it's it's more of just an awe, you know, that it's it's still it's still taking place, and these people are still in there, and they're still trying to have secrets, you know, and and not let the members attend their meetings, as you reported in today's paper. You know, it's it's crazy. Well, and and so uh, since you were fired. Uh, Right now, you, you're not uh, working anywhere. Uh, so, I mean, are, are you are you looking for another job or? I mean, yeah, I, I am looking. You know, uh, I would love to get back into the same field. You know, uh, but when you have something of this right here, uh, this situation, it makes it a little complicated to get get a job, you know, because people look at that and they look at you as, you know, maybe a problem for them if they're not doing something right. Maybe you'll call out a problem for them, which, you know, really isn't the case at all. You know, I only done what was 
I felt was right for the association. It wasn't that I was looking to cause problems, you know, or looking to uh, get controversy started again, you know, but it makes it a little complicated to find work. And then, you know, I'm, I'm looking for a career at that, you know, so uh, I'm, I'm taking my time, but I am looking. And, and so do, do you have, I mean, how, how have you coped with this experience? Have you had people to, to uh, a system of support or anything like that? I have a few people who, you know, have really supported me, you know, and, and are there for me. And uh, they help keep me afloat, you know, uh, with everyday life and uh, mentally at that, too. And, and so, you know, this lawsuit could drag on for some time. Do, how, how are you going to move on with your life, e even with this lawsuit lingering? Well, I mean, really the only thing you can do is just move on. I mean, I'm, it's something that you think about every day uh, because that was an everyday life for six years. I mean, we was clocking anywhere 60, 70, 80 hours a week many times uh so i mean it was it was more of a a way of life you know that's, that's what you did so it it's complicated to move on but you you have to move on so like i said i'm i'm looking for another career and i'm looking to uh establish myself somewhere else but yeah uh and, and i'm sure at some point you'll you'll get another job but how, how do you move past this experience mentally? Mentally? Oh, uh, well, that's a good question. I mean, I don't know, I don't know how you would move past something like this mentally. I mean, except for, you know, you just look at it, you know, you know you've done the right thing, you know that you're, you've done all you can do and you're still doing all you can do and that uh, life goes on. But when you think back about the the toll this has taken on you I mean from what I understand you had to move out of your house and now you're uh, w living with with family and I mean that that's um, that's certainly taken a toll on you uh, when you think back at all that's happened and you know you said that you you, you think that this might impact your ability to get a job in the future do you regret what you've done? No, I have no regrets at all. I, I, uh, I'm completely satisfied with what I've done, you know, and I, I wouldn't have done it any differently. And I, uh, I'm, I'm proud of what I've done. You know, a lot of people doesn't, you know, they don't look at it as a, a thing to be proud of. You know, and actually people might look down on it, you know, as much as it's been in the paper and much as it's been in the public eye. Uh, but to me, you know, it's a great accomplishment anytime you can help someone. You know, I, I feel like if they deserve help, you should you should help them, and you don't you don't regret doing something like that. Well, Sonny, I'm going to continue reporting on your lawsuit and North Lee as issues continue between their nearly $9 million USDA Rural Development loan with issues between North Lee and the city of Tupelo over serving water in the annexed areas. And I really appreciate you taking a moment to share some of your uh, thoughts as you've experienced things in recent years. And I want to thank everyone who uh, has watched this. Again, I'm Robbie Ward, the government and and politics reporter for the Daily.